Hello, Carmen. How are you doing? Hello, Bob. How are you? Hey, good. Welcome to Chapter 5, I believe, correct? Correct. Okay, Chapter 5 is a little bit uh, tricky here. How are you doing with the debits and credits? You feel more comfortable? I feel a lot more comfortable with debits and credits still. You know, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm still having a little bit of, you know, I, I'm more comfortable, but I'm still, I'm still in looking back and forth too. Yeah, you're still in learning mode with that. In learning mode, correct. Yeah, that'll take a little bit. Um, th this chapter here, we'll get started because I have a feeling you might be, you might be the only one who shows up today. Oh, okay, no problem. Even better. <laughs> yeah, a little one-on-one, -on -one, you know? Yeah, yes. All right, hold on here. Uh-huh. Can you uh, see the screen now? Yes, I can. Okay, here we go. This, this is a little tough little chapter here, but we'll get through it like everything else. Adjusting entries. What you're going to learn now is the trial balance that we prepare at the end of the month, right? right. The month ends and we've had transactions. And during the month, we've written journal entries to record data. And then we post that information over to the general ledger, right? Correct. And then the general ledger has balances in them that we use to prepare the trial balance. What you're going to learn in this chapter here <coughs> is that by definition, that trial balance is incomplete and thus incorrect and requires adjusting, okay? Mm -hmm. And there's different types of in adjusting entries we're going to talk about. Well, come on now, don't prepare end of period adjustments, huh? At the end of the period, at the end of the month, Carmen, we're gonna write journal entries to record equipment wearing out, depreciation expense, okay? Remember the prepaid insurance we purchased, Carmen? Yes. That now is going to become an expense as we use the insurance. Employees have done some work for us, but we haven't paid them yet, and we have to record those expenses when they worked. Since these events have not been entered, adjusting entries must be made. And why are we doing this? Because of a couple of gap principles. The revenue recognition principle, which states that all revenues are recorded at the time they occur, has nothing to do with when you pay it. Same thing with expenses. You have to recognize expenses when they're incurred, even if you didn't make any payment yet. It's called the matching principle. And typically that shows up as a question on the test. The matching principle matches revenues and expenses. The revenue recognition principle, we just went through that. Revenues are earned when the service is provided or the product is sold. Same thing with expenses. They're, they're incurred when the goods or services are received or, or the assets are consumed. Expenses should be recorded when they take place. And that gives us back to the matching principle the matching principle matches revenues and expenses in order to come up with proper financial statements a fiscal year a fiscal year does not have to be a calendar a calendar period right a fiscal right. year means uh, a business year doesn't need to be the same as a calendar year many business schedule their fiscal year to end when things are slow for example, Nordstrom's, they close out their year at the end of February for two reasons. Things are a little bit slower then. If they have to take inventories, it helps. And they want, they want to take advantage of those last month's sales that were strong at the end of the year. Adjustments are made and financial statements are prepared. Okay, you ready for the first one, Carmen? Ready. Replies. 
supplies. Mitch purchased supplies for eighty dollars, right? And mm-hmm. they were debited to the asset account called supplies. So you have an asset sitting there that's worth eighty dollars. You haven't used it yet, but at the end of the month, according to an inventory of the supplies, there are only twenty supply dollars worth of supplies on hand at the end of June. So how many did how much did Mitch use? Probably like sixty. Sixty, yeah. He had he had eighty originally, mm-hmm. and now there's only twenty left. So we have to reduce this asset by sixty dollars and record the appropriate expense, supplies expense. Unless there's an adjusting entry made, eighty dollars worth of supplies would show on the balance sheet, and that would be terribly wrong. Yeah. Assets would be overstated. Supplies expense would be understated. Your profit would be overstated, okay? So Mm -hmm. let's look at the journal entry. We're going to debit supplies expense and credit the supplies. Oh, come on, you. Okay, we see it pretty clearly here, Carmen? Yes. What expense are we recording? The $60. Yeah, $60 supplies expense, right? Correct. He's used some of those supplies. So that's an expense now. $60, we're going to debit the supplies expense for $60. And what are we going to credit? Supplies. Right. So how much do they have left in supplies after this? $20, right? $20. There we go. This is an example of an adjusting journal entry. You 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 will get this particular one on on the test for sure. They always give out the inventory, the adjustments for insurance or prepaid supplies. Okay, make a little sense so far, Carmen. Yes. Okay, let's see what we have coming up next. Prepaid insurance. It's the same exact thing. Mitch paid seven hundred for a ten month policy, right? That's mm-hmm. supposed to say seven hundred up there, but he paid seven hundred dollars for a ten month policy. That's seventy dollars a month worth of expense when the policy kicks in. At the time he purchased the insurance policy, it was an asset because he hasn't used it yet. Now a month has gone by. And how much is that policy running per month? $70, $70. right? Mm -hmm. Look at your journal entry. You debit insurance expense to increase it, and you decrease prepaid insurance with the credit. And here it is again. Look at your journal entry. You debit the expense, and you credit the asset. Your adjusting journal entries, if you want to make a note of this, are a search for unrecorded expenses. That's what we're looking for. Why do we do these adjustments at one end? A end? search of recorded expenses, right? Yep. It's a search for, for missing expenses or unrecorded expenses, okay? Why do we do these at month end? Could we do them during the during the month? Well, you probably could, but do you really want to go out and count the supplies 30 times every day and make an adjusting entry? That wouldn't be very efficient. Same thing with the insurance. You don't know if you're going to buy another insurance policy that you might have to layer on top of that. So our our T account, we'll take a peek at the T account. We debit the expense. We credit insurance, okay? Mm -hmm. And here's another little tip. No cash. You can never have cash in an adjusting journal entry, okay? Okay. Never have cash. The reason I mention that is I notice students get a little uh, flustered. They get panicky, and they're not sure what the proper account is, (laughs) and they throw cash down there. You don't have cash in an adjusting journal entry. 
cash is not like supplies. You don't go out to the safe at the end of the month, count the money, and what's ever missing, you write a journal entry, okay? Well, that helps a lot because I would keep thinking that you would. No cash in an adjusting entry. No cash. We are adjusting expenses and assets, basically. Every adjusting entry has one income statement account and one balance sheet account. These are little tips that might help you, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. All right. You've been a working woman, right, Carmen? You've been out earn a paycheck, right? Correct. When you get paid on, say, Friday, mm -hmm. you don't get paid through that day, right? No. They hold back a check for a week or two, right? Right. Now, here's what we here's the situation we have here now. We have a company that's already paid its employees sixteen hundred and fifty. This is supposed to be sixteen fifty. Anyway, they paid their employees sixteen fifty. So that's done. We don't have to worry about it, right? Yes. But on the June on June twenty eighth, twenty ninth, and thirtieth, you earned four hundred dollars. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to get paid for them, right? Not until no. two more weeks. We have to record that now as an expense, okay? You worked $400 worth of labor on June 28th, 29th, and 30th. You're not going to get paid for two weeks, but you worked those hours during the month of June. Therefore, that $400 must be recorded as wages expense, okay? Okay. Wages expense. Wages haven't been paid yet, but you earn them. If the company fired you today, today, they'd have to hand you that paycheck because they really do owe it on June 30th. It's just that you're a nice employee and you agreed when you started work to wait for your paycheck. If the company went out of business that day, they have to give it to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Rohan owes the employees for these wages. $400. Debit wage expense, credit wage is payable, huh? Uh-huh. Drink in the journal entry. You notice so far, we've done three or four journal entries and they're all a debit to an expense, right? Right. The credit will always be something from the balance sheet, either an asset or a liability, okay? Okay. So here we debit wage expense <clears throat> and notice what we're crediting we're crediting an account that should be called accrued wages payable wages payable is okay that's mm -hmm. a liability right? right that is money the company owes you right now if you quit on the 30th they'd have to pay you right there on the 30th okay it is a legitimate liability that the company owes at the end of the month and it is an expense that needs to be recognized okay Looking at the T accounts, remember they had sixteen fifty that they already paid, Carmen. Yes. Now we added that four hundred that you earned the last day of the month. Total expense is now up to two thousand fifty, and yep. they owe four hundred now. They already took care of the sixteen fifty. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're going to get into a little bit of depreciation expense. Depreciation expense. I think you you should pray pray that they put that on the test because that should be the easiest one. And we'll talk about it, right? Yeah. Historical cost principle. Assets are always recorded at their actual historical cost, right? That cost remains on the general ledger of books as long as the business owns the asset. So you bought an asset today for $10,000 and now it's five years later and that asset suddenly is worth a hundred thousand. You cannot change the cost to the higher. You must keep that asset at the original cost. You will show any income or gain only when you sell it. Okay. So no adjustments are made for changes in the market value. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about depreciation expense. A couple of terms. Useful life. It's the period of time that an asset is expected to, to work for us. 
an asset's useful life expires as a result of wear and tear, if it no longer satisfies the business, it's not doing what it's supposed to. So we're going to record an expense called depreciation expense, and we're going to reduce the net book value of this asset. Expense should be recognized and the value of the asset should be reduced. Okay. Mm -hmm. Depreciation is the expense we're going to charge. It's a method of matching an asset's original cost against the revenue produced over its useful life. That's a fancy way of saying machinery and equipment wear out, right? Your your car with 100,000 miles on it doesn't perform like it did uh, when you drove it at a dealership necessarily. And there's different kinds of depreciation methods, and we're going to use what's called straight line, straight line. Depreciation expense is based on estimates of the useful life and salvage value. Useful life, back to this, the useful life of an asset is determined by the company. It has to be a reasonable useful life. You can't use it to fool around. You bought a car for your sales manager today, and she's going to be driving that car all over the Western District, which com which comprises Washington, Oregon, California, Arizona, Nevada. That person is going to be driving that car like crazy. We think that car is only going to last five years. That would be the useful life. You estimate a useful life. And we're going to reduce the asset by charging an account called depreciation. And let's understand some one more thing, salvage value, salvage, junk value, if you if you want to say it that way. The expected market value of the asset at the end of its useful life. Scrap value, you know, you know what a scrap yard is, junkyard, right? Residual value, they call it. Depreciable right. cost is the original cost, less salvage value. You have a car that that woman we said, that sales manager, she's driving it all over the Western United States. And at the end of five years, that car has 300,000 miles on it because she drives so much. Well, that car is no longer usable, really. So we call a junk dealer. And we think at the beginning of this process, we think the junk guy will give us $500 for it, just to take it off our hands. That's the salvage value, scrap value. So here we go. Let's look at a calculation for straight line depreciation. Mitch bought some motor scooters, right? He says these, these guys are going to last for five years, and he's making it easy because there's no salvage value. No salvage value. You don't depreciate the salvage value. So cost forty eight hundred dollars, no salvage. The whole forty eight hundred needs to be spread over the next five years. He bought this asset for forty eight hundred. He is going to spread the cost of that asset over the next five years. And he does it on a monthly basis, like all businesses. Assume a full month's depreciation is recognized the depreciable cost is spread over 60 months, five years times 12 months, right? Mm -hmm. 4,800 divided by 60 months is $80 per month, okay? Okay. That is the expense every month. Every month for the next five years, <laughs> you're going to write a journal entry where you're going to debit depreciation expense and credit an account called accumulated depreciation. Book value. These, these, these slides are a little bit out of the order I would like, but that's okay. Book value, that's the original cost less the accumulated depreciation. It's the original cost less how much you've depreciated since day one. Undepreciated cost, and it has nothing to do with the market value. Or selling price. Where I worked for many years, we had an old-fashioned lead-type machine that that in the pre-PC uh, days, we 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 used just a little bit for a certain customer in Hollywood. 
it turned out that people wanted to collect those machines and it was worth a lot more than the book value, which was zero. We had fully depreciated it, but people would come in and offer 25,000 for it. We could not represent the market value. We had to keep it at zero only if we sold it. Okay, say hello to accumulated depreciation. This is a contra asset. Contra means opposite. From the Spanish word meaning contra, <laughs> opposite. It is an asset account, Carmen, but it carries a credit balance. Makes it an outlier. And there are a couple of these contra accounts that you need to work with. It has a credit balance. So you're increasing it with a credit. It's deducted, though, from the original cost of the asset to get the net book value. So let's 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 divide and conquer here, okay? Mm -hmm. The adjusting entry for depreciation expense is always the same. It's always a debit to depreciation expense and a credit to accumulated depreciation. Your expense is debited and your asset is credited in this case. Okay? Okay. So let's see if we can get a little bit of feel for this. Here is your journal entry. They said it was $80 a month. We debit delivery equipment. We credit accumulated depreciation. Okay? which is an asset account. Keep in mind, accumulated depreciation is an asset account. How much did we originally pay for this asset? $4,800, right? Mm -hmm. We've now depreciated 80. The original cost of the asset minus the balance in the accumulated depreciation is called the net book value, okay? Mm -hmm. You see that 4,800 there? Right. You're never going to touch it. Never, never, never. It's always going to remain at 4,800 as long as you own that asset. What's going to change is the net book value, which is your original cost, less the adjustment. Okay? Mm -hmm. Original cost minus accumulated depreciation equals the net book value. So that always is going to stay the same. Never going to change. Never change that $4,800. What's going to change is next month, this total is going to be 160 right? Because it's going to add another 80 Yeah. At the end of a year, you're going to have uh, $960 balance here. And after five years, you're going to have $4,800 in accumulated depreciation and we're done the book value becomes zero we're fully depreciated okay okay and they're just showing you a couple of the new accounts you're seeing for the first time in red accumulated depreciation wages payable that's the liability for the adjusting on salaries and then prepaid supplies, prepaid, and oh, this is the expenses. I'm sorry, supplies, expense, insurance, Price. expense, and depreciation. Okay. Post these entries to the general ledger. Here is the posting of the. Remember our famous sixty dollars at the beginning with the supplies, Carmen. Yeah. Here it is going into the ledger. You debit. Supplies expense for 60, and that brings the balance to a debit of 60, okay? Posting adjusting entries is the same as posting anything else, except you might have a different code written here under the item, okay? Let me fix this. Come on, what's wrong with you? And we're sh we should be good with posting to the ledger, huh? Yes. Supplies expense, we debit, we credit supplies. Supplies, we have to debit, we have to credit supplies. So we come over to our general ledger. 
And Correct. there is the credit for $60, which leaves the balance of 20, right? Right. There's the expense for 60. And we have 60 there and that's our balance, $60. And they're doing the same thing with the insurance expense. Insurance expense. We are going to debit insurance expense for 70. That brings the balance to 70. We're going to credit or reduce that asset with a credit to prepaid insurance. And we bring it over here to prepaid insurance. Our beginning balance was 700 minus 70. We're down to 630, okay? Okay. Let me fix this here. Ditto with the other two entries. So you should be good on posting to the ledger, I would think. Right, Carmen? Yes. Okay. Wages expense, we debit. And now the balance is up to 205 all because they had processed the earlier payroll. There's our payable up here. We now have a, deb a, a, a credit balance representing that liability. And depreciation expense, it's always the same. Debit depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation. Those are the adjusting entries, Carmen. Okay. That's all we're talking about. Not too terribly hard, huh? Not too terribly hard, but it, it can be a little tricky. Absolutely. Once, Absolutely. once I would be doing it by myself again, like I said, but, yeah, but yeah, no, I it's, know. Not, it's just to the point that you just have to reread everything and look at the numbers correct, because if yep. you get one number wrong, you get everything wrong. Yep. That's one of the pitfalls of the business, huh? Yep. <laughs> I've, I've learned that through these yeah. chapters. Yeah. What's your major, Carmen? Um, My major... I actually, we, my husband and I, um, my husband actually owns his uh, small business, oh. landscape. He's a landscaper. And oh, wow. um, I have my license in cosmetology. So I eventually want to have actually my own business as well. Wow. So I don't, I don't know anything about accounting, bookkeeping. And yeah. um, that's what I, that's what I'm coming taking this class actually to learn and and be able to help my my partner in his business and eventually Excellent. be his his right hand and be her his bookkeeper and you know yeah. have all this so that's it. i i don't know anything but i'm learning Good. and i i'm putting all my effort into this class so i can keep on taking more accounting classes and eventually yeah. I'm yeah. a mom of two daughters as well. So I'm, <laughs> I'm working from home, going to school and being a mother and housewife. Oh, so busy, busy. I, I admire your uh, diligence here. Maybe yes. you can go for your bookkeeping certificate then, no? Yes, of course. That's what I want. I there want to go. achieve that. And I, you know, it's, it's, it's a little overwhelming because I haven't been at school for a long and, you know, adjusting to this online classes and everything, it's been a little overwhelming, but I'm putting all my effort into it so I can pass this class and be able to keep going with it. Yeah, we're here for you, Carmen, huh? Thank you so much. I appreciate you a lot. Your patience. Yeah, the, on the online teaching is not my favorite. I would rather be in the classroom. Yes, and I. This is my first time taking an online class, and it's it's challenging because mm -hmm. I'm I'm a person like you know person. I would rather take it in person, but it's a little hard for my schedule. Yeah, well, that's the good part about it. Okay, we went through all these adjusting entries, huh? And yes. your husband, the landscaper, he's gonna have a lot of supplies sitting around, right? Yes. <laughs> Lots. So, so you're gonna have to make that adjusting entry. Does he have any equipment? He sure does. Yeah, you go. It's appreciation expense. You got it. Here we go. Prepare a worksheet. We'll just go, we'll just look at this briefly because we'll get into this a little more. Okay. At the end of the period, 
we prepared a trial balance, okay? Mm -hmm. And what we learned just now is that trial balance is incomplete and inaccurate and needs adjusting. Now we adjusted the trial balance. Now the trial balance is correct. We are now go going to show a worksheet that takes us from the unadjusted trial balance to the financial statements. And there's five steps here. Don't write these down. You'll see them. Okay. Five steps. You prepare the trial balance. We know that. Yes. Prepare the adjustments, which we just starting to learn now, right? This is prepare what makes it hard for me, that the trial balance. I, I do have a, a lot of trouble with the trial balances. Okay. The, tri the trial balance is simply the ending balance of everything in your general ledger. That's all it is. Okay. You go to your general ledger and you see cash and you put cash down a hundred dollar debit. You see accounts payable three hundred dollars that goes on the credit side. That's all the trial balances. It's the balances in the general ledger at that point in time. And as we know, the debits must equal the credits. And that's what the trial balance does for us at the beginning. Okay. So we're going to prepare the trial balance. We're going to do the adjustments and come up with a corrected or adjusted trial balance. And then once we have that, we've done the hard part. Now we just have to pick up the, what goes in the income statement and the balance sheet. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the worksheet is just a, is really just um, scrap paper really is all it turns out to be. It's for the use of the accounting department. It's a, it's a, uh, a convenient way to consolidate the information at month end. It's just a worksheet. Nobody investing in a company says, I want to see your worksheet, okay? It's not a financial statement. Okay. So step one, we prepare the trial balance. And we were just talking about that. Mm -hmm. Step one, prepare the trial balance. Step two, the next two columns, we're going to record the adjustments, those entries. And then the next step is to prepare. Well, we won't go to the next step yet. Wow, look at that worksheet, huh? Two, four, six, eight, ten columns. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Not that tough if you divide and conquer. Start with the trial balance, the yellow. Okay. You don't even have to, you don't have to calculate the trial balance. The trial balance does is prepared by itself because all you're doing is copying the balances down from the general ledger. Okay. Okay. Now let's look at the adjustment column. Adjustment, huh? Remember, we had $80 worth of supplies. Mm -hmm. Now we have to credit 60 because they use 60. That insurance policy was Basically. usage of 70. Remember that? Yes. Accumulated depreciation, which is an asset, but it has a credit balance. We credit that for 80 and there's the wages payable. And here are the offsetting expenses because adjusting journal entries are searches for unrecorded expenses. There's our debit to wage expense, our debit to supplies expense, and then insurance and depreciation. Notice what the balance is in those expenses, like supplies expense was zero, right? Zero, right. Same thing with insurance expense and depreciation expense. We don't do them until the end of the month. So you would expect them to be zero. The wages, they did have that one payroll period that they did record. So you get the feel of where we're putting these adjustments on the worksheet? Yes. Yeah, we're, we put our debits and credits just like you see them right here. That's the hard part. We're done with the hard part. Jeez, what happened there? Step three, prepare the adjusted trial balance. Extend those debits and credits. If the account is a debit and credit, you subtract or two debits or two credits, you add. I think you'll figure that out once you do this a little bit. Mm -hmm. Look at our worksheet now, Carmen. 
cash and accounts receivable were 470, right? And 3100. They're never going to change. We don't adjust cash. What do we adjust though? We adjust supplies. supplies and the insurance. And insurance. How much of that insurance did we use this month? 60. Yeah, 60, 60 and 70, right? 60, 60 for supplies, 70. 70 for prepaid insurance, 80 debit, credit 60 gives us a balance, a debit balance of 20. 20. 700 debit credit gives us 630. It's our adjusted trial balance. What else do we need to look at? Well, we had the wages payable. At the beginning of the month, they had nothing in payable. They had already paid off the payroll through the 27th. 400 now is the new balance. You went from zero to 400. And look at your expenses. Wages were 1650 plus 400. Gives you 1050. And then we have supplies going from zero to 60. Insurance from zero to 70. And depreciation expense from zero to 80. 80. Make a little bit of sense at this point? Yes. Yeah. At this point, if you if you if you're good, if you can do columns three and four, you've done the hard part. Now we're ready to do the financial statements, huh? Mm -hmm. We have to figure out which of these goes on the income statement and which goes on the balance sheet, huh? Yes. Remember my tip? Remember I said go. To, to the first revenue account, uh -huh. draw a horizontal line above the delivery phase, a horizontal line, that's the horizontal line. Why do I suggest you do that? Do you remember? So you can remember that that's gonna be the, where the income statement goes, right? Exactly. Everything below that line is your income statement. Everything mm -hmm. above that line is the balance sheet. And we're not going to give you a trial balance that that's out of sequence. Some teachers like to torture their students with that. I, I don't particularly like that trick. Okay. Step four and five. We do the income statement and we do the balance sheet. Huh? Yeah. So let's take a peek. You now have a new corrected trial balance, right? Right. Everything above the, the delivery fees is your balance sheet. So that's where these balances are going. You have debit, 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 debit. And then you have some credits and you have a drawing account of debit. There's your balance sheet. Look at your income statement. Income statement. Zero. Eight Eight thousand, yeah, eight thousand dollars, right? In in income delivery, uh huh. And here are all your expenses. You're picking them right up from here. Putting now, them. you notice that columns one and two debits equal credits, right? Right. Columns three and four debits equal credits, and number five, five and six debit equal credits. You notice that the debits don't equal the credits now here. It's different. We don't want them to agree. <laughs> this is our income statement. We want to see a bigger credit number, hopefully, right? Yes. So your sales were eight thousand dollars, your revenues, your expenses were thirty three sixty, right? Mm -hmm. The difference is four thousand six hundred and forty dollars. What will we call that four thousand six forty? What does that represent? Is that your what you made, right? Exactly. Exactly. Don't make it tougher than it is. Yeah. <laughs> your, your, your income, your revenue, not income, that's wrong. Your revenues, Revenue. sales, mm -hmm. minus expenses gives you your net income. So this company made pretty good money on $8,000 worth of sales. What we're going to do now, though, is take that net income and add it to the lower number. So now we're back in balance, right? Right, which is the same. We're going to do the same thing with the balance sheet. 
if we've done things correctly, the balance sheet will now be out of balance by the same number, but it'll be on the credit side. You see that? Mm -hmm. Which is the same number, right? Yeah, the net income. We add it down, we get 12020, and we bring it down. 12020. That's your worksheet. That's okay. your worksheet. Now, I'm going to give you a little clue on the test. For some God knows what reason, they like to ask you what the columns are. In other words, you're likely to get a question on the on the exam, the test, that says, what's in column five and six? And you have to be smart enough to know what's the adjusted um, trial balance. Columns one and two, trial balance, three and four, the adjustments, five and six, the finished product of the trial balance, seven and eight, the income statement, nine and 10, the balance sheet, okay? The balance sheet, okay. They, they, they try to confuse you, right? Yeah. Uh, on the question, like they ask differently? Yep, yep. But it's like you always... said, you have to pay attention to, to that and not... Yeah, it always helps to read the the question uh, carefully, or may, maybe a couple of times. Yes, that that's definitely me. I have to reread. Yeah, when I took the CPA exam, uh, I took a review course beforehand, and they yes. emphasize read the question, which may, makes sense, and then they suggest skipping to the requirements and see what they're yes. asking, and then may, maybe that helps a little bit. I have a question, Bob. Before you continue, um. Excuse me to interrupt. Mm -hmm. After after this class, do you get a cert do you get certified or certi some kind of certificate, or do I need to take another accounting class to be able to get a like certified? Get to, the be book a to get the bookkeeper certificate? Yes. I think you need to take accounting 230. Okay. But I need to take this class before and pass it in order to take that yeah. accounting 230, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And and accounting 230. The first couple of weeks is the, this course here condensed into just three weeks or so. So you should okay. have a, a little bit of a head start when you go to 2.30. Right. Okay. Many, not many, but a lot of students take 2.30 without taking 1.10. So they and don't know. Would, they don't know what's going on. Exactly. And they fell behind, they get frustrated, and they end up dropping 230 and coming back to 110. Now, others others succeed admirably. You know, it, it's, not, it's not impossible, but you're, 110 is, is a good prerequisite, okay? Yeah. Describe methods for finding errors. I'm not going to go over this. They've had this in each chapter so far. Add your numbers. Double check. Journalize adjusting entries from the worksheet. The worksheet is just something to organize. And this is just, this is just showing you. Here's the journal entry you wrote. Remember all these journal entries? We debit supplies expense for 60. Yes. Credit supplies. They're just showing you that when you do this, you you have to put, put them up here in the adjustment piece too. We I think we know that, right? The correct area where they go, right? Yeah, exactly. In order. Yep. Explain the cash, modified cash, and accrual basis of accounting. The answer to that is no. <laughs> no. <laughs> we are not teaching. Okay. 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 We are not, we are not teaching cash basis accounting. Cash basis accounting is not gap. It does not lend you, it, it, it does not result in good financial statements. If you're a serious company and you choose to go into what you call cash basis accounting, you will cash basis yourself out of business before you know it. Cash basis is really for tiny, tiny little places that don't need to borrow money. They don't need good financial statements. An example is my brother-in-law back east. He works in a family family business. They own a couple of gas stations, auto parts stores. Mm -hmm. And I'm always kidding him. I say, hey, hey Artie, how, how much money do you make at that place? What's your salary? He <laughs> says, I, I don't have a salary. I said, well, how do you get paid? 
He says, well, at the end of the week, me and my brothers, we just scoop out the money and uh, we split it up. <laughs> oh, wow. Now, that's not very good accounting, is it? No. But in that tiny little business, it works for him. We're not teaching that stuff, okay? All right. Wow, you learn something every day. Oh, yeah. All right. So you good here then, Carmen? Yes, I'm good, Bob. I just need to go back and just refresh my memory after this. I really right. appreciate the the way you and I it helps a lot when you're explaining it. Yeah, yeah, that uh, I would not want to learn this just off of um just out of the book. That would be tough. No question about it. I thought it was going to be a lot a lot more challenging this chapter, but um I'm just making it like you yeah. say, don't make it harder than it's not, right? Right. And Divide I tend to I tend to second guess myself a lot when I'm taking those quizzes. Yeah. And it's not good to do that because when you know you have the answer, but you change it, right? Yeah. A lot of times your first guess is the correct one, right? Yes. Thank you, Bob. Hey, well, you take care, Carmen. Take care now. You too. Have a bye good bye. rest of your day. Bye-bye. You too.